Good morning students. My name is Owena Constance and I'm agricultural science teacher from Slick Angels International School. Today I'll be having a revision for the GSS3 class. But before I go into what I have for them today, I would like to remind you of the directive from NCDC on how to avoid the spread of coronavirus. Please try as much as possible to wash your hands in running water for at least 30 seconds. Then avoid shaking and hugging. And also keep a meter away from someone who is coughing or sneezing. I pray in less than no time, God will deliver us from this pandemic. Like I said, I'm having a revision class for the GSS 3 students. And it's going to be a topic from the GSS 2 scheme of work. So today we'll be looking at the soil fertility. As you can see on the board, soil fertility and management. Now, for farmers, one of the assets of farmers is the land. And the land is made out of the soil. So the soil is an important asset for any farmer. So today we'll be looking at how to maintain the soil fertility. Now, let us look at the definition or remind ourselves of the definition of soil fertility. Soil fertility is the ability of the soil to supply essential nutrients that are necessary for the growth of plants. I'll take it again. Soil fertility is the ability of the soil to supply essential nutrients that are necessary for the growth of plants. Now, I want you to take note of the key words here. The key words are supply essential nutrients and necessary for the growth of plants. So we are looking at supplying essential nutrients that are necessary for the growth of plants. Now the word essential means something that is very important and necessary. So we'll be looking at those nutrients that are necessary for the growth of plants. Now, there are different ways of maintaining soil fertility, and we're looking at it today. We have basically six ways of maintaining soil fertility, and they are crop rotation, bush following, cover cropping, organic manures, inorganic manures, and mulching. These are the different ways of maintaining soil fertility. So I'm going to take my time to remind us again the definition or I give you an explanation of these ways and what are necessary in practicing them. Okay, so we're taking the first one which is crop rotation. Now what is crop rotation? Crop rotation is a practice of growing different types of crops on a piece of land in an orderly sequence year after year. I'll take it again. The practice of growing different types of crops on a piece of land in an orderly sequence year after year. So uh, the farmer can take up to three to five year course. That means you can decide to plant a particular crop on a particular piece of land and then the next year you plant another type of crop. That is crop rotation. Like you're rotating that crop. You don't plant a particular crop every year on one piece of land. So I have been able to draw a table to explain a four-year course crop rotation. Now if you look at it very well, you see the plot here and then the year. Now this one has about four plots of land. One, two, three, and four. Now you have, we are looking at, of course, we are looking at four-year course. So you have 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019. So the first plot of land, the farmer plants yam the same year, 2016, and then he goes to another plot of land, he plants maize, the next one, cowpea, and then the fourth one, millet. Now, the next year, the farmer plants another type of crop, 
not the yam he planted in 2016. He plants maize, and then he moves the next uh, plot, he plants cowpea, then millet, and then yam. He does it like that, like he's rotating the crop. Now, in this 2018, he plants cowpea, millet, yam, maize. And then he comes back to plant millet in 2019, yam, maize, and cowpea. Now, if you look at this very well, you would observe that before the farmer comes back to plant yam on that piece of land, it will take him like about five years. That is what we are looking at, crop rotation. Rotating crops, planting different types of crops on a piece of land in an orderly sequence year after year. Okay, now the advantage of this crop rotation, of course, remember, it increases or maintains the soil fertility because the amount of nutrients the yam will use in growing will not be compared to the amount of nutrients maize will use. So the depletion of nutrients will be very low. That's the essence of practicing crop rotation. Okay, let's look at the second way of maintaining soil fertility, which is bush following. Okay, another word for bush following is called shifting cultivation. Should you see anything like shifting cultivation in your exam, know that they are talking about bush following. So what then is bush following? Bush following, this is the practice of allowing the land to rest after it has been cultivated for many years. This is the practice of allowing the land to rest after it has been cultivated for many years. Now the fallow period, the word fallow can also be rest. So if you hear rest or fallow, they are the same thing. So the fallow period could be three to five years. Now what happens when the farmer allows the land to rest for some number of years? Now the, that process helps the land to retain or maintain some nutrients that will allow the plants to grow. So in the process of uh, fallow, the soil tends to absorb more nutrients and then if you plant on a land that has undergone fallowing, you will observe that the yield will be higher than a plant, a land, sorry, that has been cultivated year after year. Okay, so let's quickly, uh, what is the advantage of having the bush following or practicing bush following? One of the advantage of this is that it is very simple and cheap to practice. But there is a disadvantage. What is the disadvantage? What if the farmer does not have up to three plots of land? Or what if the farmer has just one type of land? What would the farmer do? This is a disadvantage. So it cannot be practiced on a land that is small. So that's a disadvantage for bush farming. Now, the third way of maintaining soil fertility is the cover cropping. What then is cover cropping? This involves raising fast growing crops that tend to cover the surface of the soil and prevent sun or heavy rainfall from touching the soil. I'm going to take that again. This involves the raising of fast growing crops that tend to serve as cover to the soil in order to prevent harsh sun or heavy rainfall. Now, examples of crops that, are, that can be classified as cover crops are the Stylosantis gracilis, this is a weed actually, cocoyam, potatoes. There are other different types of cover crops. Okay? Now, what this crop does is to prevent heavy rainfall or heavy downfall on the soil. And then it tends to protect the soil or preserve the soil fertility. Okay, that's the third method or third way of maintaining soil fertility. 
quickly let us look at the fourth way which is organic manures what are organic manures organic manures are plants and animal residues added to the soil to maintain soil fertility these are plants take note plants and animal residues added to the soil to maintain soil fertility now i'm sure we are, we already know more manures are and some of us have come in contact with manures too but before i explain further about manure we're going to look at the types of manures what are the types of organic manures we have the green manures farmyard or animal manures and compost manures now let me explain the green manures what are green manures green manures are fresh grasses that are gotten and then allowed to ferment and then later added to the soil to improve the soil fertility now the plants that are gotten are usually succulent plants succulent plants are those little green plants when they start growing when they are still very small those are succulent plants at that point the farmer cuts them from when they are young and then we now place them on the soil in his farm allow them to decay and then they form the green manure okay the next one is farmyard or animal manure what are farmyard from the name animal manure what should come to your mind is that it's gotten from animals so these are animal dung that are added to the soil to maintain the soil fertility you know what dung's are dung's are animal feces or urine okay so that's for farmyard or animal manure how about compost manure now compost manures are actually gotten from the two types of manures we've treated the green manures and the animal manures combined together so in compost manure you could have your succulent uh, plants you could have your animal dungs you could have your kitchen waste all combined together and usually a pit is dug for the compost manure. So when you gather your succulent plants, animal waste, kitchen waste, mix them together, put them in that pit, allow them, allow them to decay for some time. And then later on, you can go back to that pit, gather or you start digging them out and then spread them on your farm. Now, in that case, you're increasing the soil fertility because that manure contains enough or a lot of soil nutrients that is for compost manure all right um let us look at inorganic manures what are inorganic manures inorganic manures can also be called fertilizers i'm sure you're familiar with fertilizers we use them at home now what are they meant for these are chemical substances in form of powders, granules, pellets or crystals that are added to the soil to improve the soil fertility. Now in this case, I use the word improve here instead of maintaining. Now these fertilizers, they tend to add more nutrients to the soil to help the plant grow well, if you look at a plant that has been fertilized, the yield is different from a plant that just grew naturally. But although there are chemical substances, it is advisable that you practice natural way of maintaining soil fertility or uh, producing crops instead of applying chemicals. They tend to be harmful later. But it is also a form of improving soil fertility, especially for commercial farmers. Okay, let's look at the different types of fertilizers. There are actually two types of fertilizers. You have the simple fertilizers, 
and the complex fertilizers. Now, fertilizers, I want to tell you something. Fertilizers are specific. Now, when you add them to a crop, it tends to produce a particular element that that crop might be lacking. So, there we have specific fertilizers. Now, for the simple fertilizer, fertilizers we're looking at, fertilizers that can provide just a type of macronutrient or major nutrient that is lacking in that plant. For instance, we have the nitrogen fertilizers. This N here means nitrogen is an element. We also have the phosphorus fertilizers. That's for P. It's just a symbol for them. And then for K, we have potassium fertilizers. Now, you look at it, you have it L, P, and K. And then you, you will wonder where is K coming from? I didn't mention K something. I mentioned potassium. Now, the reason why you're having K is because the symbol for potassium is K. So take note of that. So you have nitrogen fertilizers that pro provide nitrogen to the plants or to the soil. Phosphorus fertilizer provides phosphorus, and then potassium fertilizer provide potassium to the soil or plants. How about, how about the complex fertilizers? From the name complex, it has more than one type of elements or macro elements in it. So in complex fertilizers, you could have like simple fertilizers combined together to form one. That is for complex. So in other words, you're having a popular fertilizer that is always used in farming, NPK fertilizer. It's called NPK fertilizer. It's just one fertilizer, but it contains about three macro elements or nutrients. It contains nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. I hope you're able to remember the NPK fertilizer as a complex fertilizer. Okay, let's look at the last way of maintaining soil fertility, which is mulching. So what is mulching? This is a practice of covering the soil surface with grass, crop residues, straw, sawdust, or corn cobs to maintain soil fertility. Here, the farmer covers the soil with straw, crop residues, after some time, these things tend to decay and then they improve the soil fertility. So the advantage of mulching is that it is not very expensive. You can easily gather straw, gather crop residues, just add them to the soil and then leave them to decay for some time and then it tends to increase the soil fertility. It's very cheap, very, very cheap, not expensive. Okay, so that's it for ways of maintaining soil fertility. Okay, we've been able to look at the three, uh, six different ways of maintaining soil fertility. So I'm going to end this lesson by doing a recap. So let's look at again what soil fertility is. I'm going to be very fast. Soil fertility is the ability of the soil to supply essential nutrients necessary for the growth of plants. The different ways of maintaining soil fertility are crop rotation, bush following, also called shifting cultivation, cover cropping, you have organic manures, inorganic manures, also called fertilizer, and then mulching. These are the six ways of maintaining soil fertility. Okay, right now, I'm going to look at three questions I've been able to get from your past questions and then I'm going to read out the questions to you and then tell you the answer. It's actually on what you have treated right now. Okay, uh, question number one. Fertilizer is not needed in bush following because, I'm taking it again, fertilizer is not needed in bush following because A. Falling leaves serve as manure. B. Farmers are lazy. C. Fertilizer dissolves in water. D. Fertilizer is costly. 
Now, if you look at the options, the correct answer is A. Following leaves serve as manure. So if you have manure, there's no need adding fertilizer. Number two question is, which of the following can be used as a cover crop? I'm taking it again. Which of the following can be used as a cover crop? You have A, cassava, B, banana, C, maize, D, melon. Now if you look at the option, the correct answer is A, cassava. The other ones have prior leaves, so they can serve as cover crops. Now the last one is, which of the following is not true of inorganic fertilizers? Which of the following is not true of inorganic fertilizer? A. They improve soil texture and structure. Again, A. They improve soil texture and structure. B. They are easily leached. They are easily leached. C. They contain higher concentration of nutrients than organic manure. C again, they contain higher concentration of nutrients than organic manure. Then D, they are easy to handle. Now the correct answer is they are easily leached. That is for this. So, I hope you'll be able to answer any question that comes from uh, soil fertility and management. Okay, so I'm going to give you an assignment right now and I expect you to submit via my email address or WhatsApp number. Okay, uh, you have an assignment and I expect you to attempt this assignment and submit to me. So the first assignment reads, describe the process of compositing. Describe the process of compositing. Number two, prepare a five-year course rotation. In my explanation, I thought you had to prepare a course by rotation. We did four years, so you do a five-year course of rotation. So three, briefly explain four ways of maintaining soil fertility. Can see I was able to explain them while I was teaching you. So briefly explain just four ways of maintaining soil fertility. And when you're done, submit via my email address, Jen for God 2008 at Yahoo.com. Again, Jen for God 2008 at Yahoo.com. Or you can submit via my WhatsApp number. This is my WhatsApp number 0809 0709 0809 0713694. Okay. Uh, I hope uh, I've been able to refresh your memory on soil fertility. Uh, okay, with this, I want to believe that if you come across any question in your junior NECO or state exam regarding to soil fertility and its management, you'll be able to answer all of them. It's all right, take care of yourself and remember to stay safe. Avoid hugging, like I said, maintain social distance. Okay, remember this is coming from Sleek Angels International School. We love you and we have missed you. And we pray that this pandemic ends soon. Bye.